got top quality players to help him to get the balls in the box for him. So I, I just don't see any reason why he'd be a flop at Chelsea. Through for Morata! He's missed. He's only got a miss. This is a striker who can do near enough anything. Hi guys and welcome back to Cheeky Sport, welcome back to the channel. Yes, it's me, unfortunately for you, the Willenny wannabe. Thank you for all the positive comments on the last video, I really do appreciate it. Obviously there were some negative ones, I guess it was going to be inevitable. Get this mop-haired little muppet off Cheeky Sport, who the f*** do you think you are? All you do is talk about other people, you little sap f*** off and get a job, you mug. I'm 17, I'm not exactly in dire need of employment. Judging by the fact that you're called Johnny, you're probably about 50, and if you have time to spread this hate, then you need a job. What a Come back. Anyway, this week in football, we saw Arsenal comfortably beat an awful Chelsea side at the Emirates in this weekend's biggest game. Arsenal pressed Chelsea really highly, played with great intensity, and you know, they deservedly won the game. As an Arsenal fan, I wasn't going into the game with much confidence, but uh, Chelsea were f dreadful. It appears to be the first time Sarri Ball's really come into question amongst Chelsea fans, and I think it's justifiable. He's essentially allowing Kante to play out of position, you know, play further forward up the pitch, you know, have a bit more freedom to create things, he doesn't really look comfortable there and it's leaving Jorginho exposed with his lack of pace and, you know, he's not very mobile and uh, lacks a defensive mindset. I know this is the system he implemented at Napoli, a successful one too, but I think it doesn't really suit the style and the intensity and the, the pace of the Premier League compared to Serie A where, you know, if you leave Jorginho exposed and by himself, he can't really cope with the pace and intensity. I think Sarri needs time and not all his criticism is fair, but I do think he maybe needs to shift players into their more natural positions. Obviously, the acquisition of Gonzalo Higuain will help significantly an actual competent striker who can score goals. This move does mean Morata's time at Chelsea has come to an end, which is quite a shame as an Arsenal fan, you know. He he's pretty terrible. I'm Kevin De Bruyne. I'm Aaron Moy. I'm Antonio Rudiger. I'm Hugo Lloris. I'm f He got 60 million. I think it's also worth looking at the Chelsea fans' reactions after this wonderful player came into the club. Can I get a yeehaw? Hi, I'm Alvaro. I'm very happy to be here. And see you soon. Come on, Chelsea. He has got top quality players to help him to get the balls in the box for him. So I, I just don't see any reason why he'd be a flop at Chelsea. Through for Morata! He's missed. He's only got a miss. This is a striker who can do near enough anything, anything. <laughs> he can score tap-ins, 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 tap-ins. He's good on one-on-ones. It's great, it's great. Good. Speaking of transfers, at Barcelona complete one of the strangest signings of all time this week by signing Kevin Prince Botang from yes, Sasulo. Sasulo. It's like their recruitment team just couldn't be f and just like saw just found a player who used to be all right, so they thought we'll get him. With this news, I thought I'd look at some of the other ridiculous transfer stories that have been going around in this window, which have been removed. Some of them because of just how how much rubbish they were. Arsenal close in on Usman Dembele for £90 million after Miss Lintac convinces Winger to join. We can't even afford Denis Suarez for £14 million and they said we're signing Dembele for 90 Messi considering move to Liverpool as Ronaldo challenges him to test himself in a new league. Imagine swapping Sergio Busquets with Jordan Henderson. Napoli close in on Mohamed El Nenny as Ancelotti desperate for Egyptian as he sees him as long-term replacement for Hamshik. Oh god, the things people do for clicks. Speaking of Egyptians, another one, the main one this week, has made headlines for the wrong reasons. And you all know what those reasons are. Salah dived again against Palace on the weekend and I don't really know why the media haven't really picked up on this as much as they have on certain other players. When Mustafi and Shaka dived early in the season against Huddersfield, they were ridiculed in the media. You know, they got so much criticism. When it's Salah, oh, there was a bit of contact 
Oh. Certain players get certain liberties in the media and it's just wrong, isn't it? If Sterling has breakfast, he's depriving starving children in Africa of food. And when Harry Kane commits a mass genocide, oh, it's an accident. Anyway, it has gotten to the point where the memes have been just too much for Mo Salah and he's actually removed himself from social media. I thought Harry Kane's timid response to the memes around him claiming goals was pathetic, but this is just... Something else. Elsewhere this week, this Leicester fan produced the best match day vlog of all time in their thrilling draw with Wolves. Get it on Wes. Come on. It's a good whip one. Wes! Also this week, I do have to mention the best bit of housery of all time. Derby were having a training session at their training grounds, obviously, and probably a staff member or something, they just reported that they saw some geezer standing in the trees or something. A bit suspicious. Turns out it was a spy from Leeds who were about to play Derby. You've got to rate that. There was so much criticism around the matter, you know, Marcelo Bielo was criticised a lot because he was the one who actually sent out the spy, the Leeds manager. The club decided to hold an emergency press conference, you know, it was reported massively that Bielsa was going to go in, he was going to resign, and you know, everyone was saying it, oh, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's inevitable. He walked in and basically just all he says is that he did it to every team they've played this season. What a man. Yes, it's a bit dodgy. It's a bit of a horrible thing to do. But, you know, if you can get away with it to the extent that they did, they basically just had to pay a fine. Then, uh, f*** it. I mean, it's clearly worked at the top of the league. So, it's not like they had points deducted or anything. Elsewhere this week, James Milner was sent off by his old PE teacher, John Moss. And finally this week, I do have to mention Emiliano Sala and the tragic accident he was involved in um, with another with a pilot as well. My thoughts just go out to the friends and family of him and also the pilot Dave Ibbotson in this hard time. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like, subscribe to Cheeky Sports, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.